page. Am I working? Very good. And then to click to the next slide, I can just use this. Okay. Good evening. I am so glad you have joined us tonight for High School 101. I think everybody got a handout as they were coming in, and that's just a little bit of information um, to tuck away, uh, so timelines and whatnot. We'll talk about that during the presentation. Um, I am Beverly McHenry, and I am your child's uh, academic advisor. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. So this is my family, my husband Mike, my children. Um, I have worked at Holy Trinity for nine years now in a variety of roles, and I can say that being an academic advisor is my absolute favorite job. I absolutely love it. Um, I have, I've been a part of the Holy Trinity community since 2001. Um, both of my daughters are HT alumni. One is out in the real world, um, having graduated college this past May and has a real job. Yes, it will happen for all of you if it hasn't already with older children. Um, my middle child is um, a junior in college. And I also, when I say I'm in the same boat as you, I literally am because I too have a freshman, my son, Trip. And I'm sorry if some of your students have classes with him. Just kidding. At any rate, too, as your children leave the nest, I find that I'm replacing uh, my children with pets. Um, this was our Christmas card picture this year. And that was our first attempt with the pets in the picture. So we went with the other photo. Um, so here we are. Oh, wait. OK. Here we are in. Um, ninth grade, building that foundation. Before I go to this slide, I do want to introduce the other members of our team. And when I say team, we work very closely together. If you've ever seen our offices, you know we are literally almost sitting in each other's laps. But <laughs> in all seriousness, um, it is a beautiful thing that when you talk to one advisor, you really are getting the expertise of the, the other um, team members in the office, because we do help each other on a regular basis. We collaborate on ideas, and um, it really is um, a great team. Mrs. Jo Pagan, she is our Director of College Counseling, and she is here tonight supporting me. Thank you, Ms. Pagan. Um, Mrs. Carrie Ramos is our Director of Counseling. She may be joining us at the end, um, if possible, um, but we shall see. Um, she is a certified school counselor. Uh, Miss Stacy Reeder has joined our team this year. Uh, she recently worked at FIT, I believe for the last 10 years on the other side of the desk in college admissions. And she is um, one of our other high school and college advisors. And Miss Tara Gunderson is a very, she's like the glue that holds us all together. She is our college counseling coordinator and registrar. So anything having to do with records, transcripts, things like that, she is in charge of all of those items and can help you there, as well as just being our mission control and connecting us all together. So here we are, we put that first semester with your children in the books of ninth grade. Um, your children now have their very first high school GPA. You'll notice that on their report card. Um, this year, we really want to build those essential skills. We really want to help teach your children as a team, you as the parents at home, and we as advisors here at school to teach children to advocate for themselves. This is a great time for them to be the ones to go see the teacher first rather than having mom or dad email first. You know, put them in the driver's seat, um, help them advocate for themselves. These are great adulting skills that are gonna serve them well throughout high school and on into college. Oops. We don't need to see that again. 
Um, there is a little saying, by the time you get to senior year, you'll hear in our meetings there, let your child be the quarterback when it comes to doing college applications and you be the coach and that's the same thing um, same rule for high school in general if you can again put your child in that driver's seat it's it's going to be skills that are, are going to serve them well Okay, making the most of high school. Um, tonight we'll talk about your student's high school profile and what that means. Um, it's a combination of things. Um, your child's transcript, which with that first report card that hopefully you've all seen online, has everybody been able to view their child's report card? Super. Um, they were posted to on campus um, this last Friday, I believe. So those are the first grades that a college is going to see on the transcript, um, being the first ones they've made. They'll be actually be at the bottom of a transcript. The, the newer ones will be at the top. But they have started on that road to college. Um, the other part of your student's profile are all those extra extracurricular activities, the sports they do, the clubs, um, the honor societies, um, all those things together, their volunteer work. Um, all that together create that extracurricular component where colleges are looking at that whole child of their school profile. Uh, character, recommendations from teachers and other mentors. Uh, something that I like to emphasize to students is talk to your teachers, get to know them, um, ask questions in class. All these touches that you, all these interactions that you have with your teachers are helping you to build an academic relationship. Um, and the reason I want them practicing this now as a ninth grader is um, spring of junior year, they're going to be asking their teacher for a letter of recommendation for colleges. So if they've been practicing this skill throughout their high school career, it's going to come much, um, much more easily when the real deal comes along and they have to make that first ask. And you, I tell them, you want your teacher to be able to write a great letter of recommendation, and if they know you well, they know what kind of student you are. And it might be from a teacher that um, you really struggled in their class at some time, but they can attest to that character and that drive um, of that hard work in that class. So um, character definitely counts, and um, having those good recommendations and working on that skill now is a great place to start. Uh, standardized testing. I'm sure you've heard um, test optional regarding colleges and that type of thing. Testing's not going away. It is different each year and it's going to continue to change over the years. Um, but it, it's not going away anytime soon. Even colleges that are test optional, uh, they may be able to do that for an entry for admission. However, to qualify for a scholarship at their school, they may still want a student to submit scores. So um, we do want students to still know it's not going away. It is part of your profile. Freshman retreat day. We have um, a date for the end of February that we are finalizing right now. While we call it a retreat, we actually stay here at school and the entire grade retreats away on campus with the college office team. We break out into small groups and we focus on items that are relative to freshmen. Um, items such as the PSAT will be returning their test booklets to them um, from the tests they took back in October and we'll have them tuck those away for future practice. Uh, we will talk about course request, super important coming up. Um, I do highly encourage students and parents to sit down between now and retreat and look over the curriculum guide, which of course can be found in on campus. Um, 
where students can start figuring out, especially with their electives. I mean, graduation requirements, that's one thing, but figuring out those electives and figuring out which, which classes you wanna take at the honors or AP level, et cetera. But the curriculum guide is a great place to start. <coughs> um, community service, we'll be talking about that some. Um, also, an introduction to SCORE, which is our college planning tool. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later in the presentation. Um, team building activities and class bonding, that's always a fun one for them. And we always have a social emotional co component. Of course, um, being a teenager can be stressful in general, but we know over these last couple of years, we've had many other factors influencing them and um, we just wanna address those issues and give students tools and support to help them there. So that is one of the other items we talk about on retreat days. Activities, clubs and honor societies. Um, how many parents have discovered the community service guide in on campus? see a couple awesome I know in our if you've already had your advising meeting um, with me and your child I probably was able to point that out to you um, it's a super handy resource for community service um, and it's updated each year Miss Pettacini does that and she did an amazing job this year um, our director of senior high academics the link is in this slide um, but you can find it in on campus under the parent side and under the student side. I believe for the parent side, it's in important documents. Um, just to describe a little bit about activities, um, this is that part of the resume that are those extras that are you know, areas where your child can shine and show where their interests lie and things that they're good at and, and things that colleges will find appealing to, to them. Um, we have high school clubs with open membership where there's not a, a particular you know, thing you have to do. You can just sign up and go. Um, we do have clubs that require nomination or election. Uh, one example would be Tiger Leadership, and that's a club that um, would be open to sophomores uh, to be nominated for. Uh, we have honor societies, which are also by invitation. Typically, honor societies start around 10th grade because they have to get some of those classes under their belt before they can be eligible for an invitation. Um, something students can do, if they have a club they're interested in, if they email the club sponsor or advisor, which that information is in the club guide, it's at the bottom of each entry, um, they can put the student's email so they can start getting that information to um, be able to participate in their activities. Uh, something else that we have reminded students of um, in general through emails, through meetings, et cetera, is to keep those community service hours up to date. Uh, that's another piece of information in the club guide or those due dates. Um, as a freshman, they will want to have 12 and a half hours. I believe the due date is in February. And before starting um, sophomore year, they're going to want to have 25 hours for a grand total of 100 hours by senior year. And it's a great feeling going into senior year already having those community service hours completed to free up time for college applications. Um, one other aspect that we've added to community service this past year, um, we started using the app Treatum. The directions for using Treatum for students to get that uploaded to their phone is in on campus on the student side. Um, they should be uploading the app because they're gonna, it's kind of like a time card. They would actually take it to the workplace and the supervisor signs off of it there or they send them an email. But the directions again are in that club guide and um, it's actually worked out pretty well. you up here <laughs> okay this is a timetable for HD college placement I've given you uh, the large version 
Um, it is the general college counseling calendar, not so much the testing one. Um, the reason I put traditional schedule at the top is because we are just living in different times now, and a lot of the, or I should say some of the things. may be coming in a different form in the future. We're not sure. We're working on ideas to figure out what's the best way to get this information into our students' hands. Um, there is a Brevard County College Fair that happens every fall, and it's more um, like a browse and grab a pamphlet. And I would say probably for students a little bit older, um, colleges typically want to talk to sophomores and up, so freshman year is probably a little early, but it's coming. So just be aware um, that resource is available each year. Uh, spring, we usually have a curriculum night for all our families, which is a great time to hear about any new curriculum that we're offering, graduation requirements, new electives that we might be offering. It's a, a great night of information for parents. And of course, we share that same information with our students in retreat. Um, career fair, I think that's one of those things we are probably going to pivot away from and do differently would be my guess. Don't know yet, but again, this is traditionally what we've done and we are coming up with new and creative ways to um, share this information. Um, many of you have already had your family conference or have signed up for your family conference. And um, I think that's a great way to, of course, get to know your child's advisor, whether it's me this year or someone else in future years. Great place to ask questions um, that are more specific to your child. But I do encourage you to take it whenever there's an opportunity to meet with your child's advisor, um, take advantage. In terms of um, what happens at the conference and outside of other information that's disseminated is working on that four-year plan prior to course request. And uh, we want freshmen to go in with that perfect plan in mind to request those courses and know what they want. The course request time is so important because that is where administration takes all those student requests and figures out how many sections of different classes that we need to offer and that type of thing. So it's really helpful if students do their homework and have a really good idea of what they want to take for next year. Um, summer is a great time to expand your resume with activities, experiences, and service. It's a great time to get in some good community service projects. Um, it's a great time if you are on vacation in that area, if there's a college, go visit it, go get on campus. It doesn't even have to, as a freshman, it doesn't necessarily even have to be an official visit, but just getting out there and getting a feel for different types of campuses is always helpful. Um, summer programs and activities, I wouldn't say just pick something to pick something, but if your child is especially interested, interested in a particular area, summer programs are a great way to spend some weeks of the summer and um, have some additional information to put on that resume. Uh, we also passed out a standardized testing timetable. Um, not something that
while students aren't exactly cheering as they're going in to take another standardized test, it is really helpful. So when they go to test um, spring of junior year, which is the, the time the college office recommends starting that formalized testing, uh, it's an optimal time to test and they feel much more comfortable and prepared. Um, I've also been sending out the information to students in conferences about pairing scores with Khan Academy, um, which is a great way to test prep. Um, course scores have already come out in December, and I know most, most of the students I've talked to have been able to access their College Board account. If for some reason your student does not have their College Board account yet, that's okay. Um, it's easy to set up. I highly recommend that the student set it up. I mean, it's fine to sit there and help them with it um, and make sure they write down their username and password, but this is going to be the same account that they're going to use all the way through high school. It's how they're going to send scores to colleges um, during senior year. So um, they want to use an email that they check and they want to put that information in a safe place and keep it safe. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, in regard to something else I was going to tell you. Oh, and just as a reminder, these scores go absolutely nowhere, all the practice scores. They are internal, you know, between the advisor and the family, and it's just to help the student practice. These scores don't go to colleges or anything like that. It's just practice. Um, reading read, read, and read some more. All, we've been probably preaching that since the lower school days. <laughs> um, and students should definitely take challenging college preparatory classes all through high school. Um, I do have some students, they'll ask me, oh, should I take AP so-and-so because it looks good to a college? And I'll tell them, you should take AP so-and-so if you're really interested in that subject and you're ready to take that AP. Um, I don't recommend taking that kind of thing uh, just to check the box, but to take things that a student is truly interested in. Um, this, I will be s sending out this PowerPoint, so if it's a little hard to read. I'd also like to point out, this is page two um, for a, a student who's gone through all of high school. Um, I'd also like to point out. Academic support at Holy Trinity. I hope that your students all um, are using those teacher office hours. Um, we do have a button in on campus that is kind of a one-stop shopping for all the teacher office hours. Um, all of them have a morning and an afternoon for the most part. So if your student has a sport in the afternoon, they have morning hours and vice versa. Um, in addition, we do have an, a math lab uh, Mrs. Carrie Grant, who is um, our academic coach, uh, supports the math lab and runs that, uh, along with Mu Alpha Theta Math Honor Society students. Something that I do encourage students to do 
is to go in with some specific questions. Oftentimes they'll come in and say, I just need help. I don't know where to start. But if they look over, okay, where, what problems are you struggling with and go in with a specific question, they're better able to get help that's going to actually help them in the long run. Excuse me one second. We do have uh, what we call special diplomas, uh, a STEAM, Global Citizenship, and an AP Capstone Diploma. I know um, the descriptions of these between our family handbook and the curriculum guide, there's more information in there. And there is also um, some information in um, on or at htacademy.org. Um, what I tell students regarding the special diploma, it, it is not a, um, it's not something that's going to get you into a particular college. It's not, you know, like a magic wand like that. However, each, with each of these diplomas, there are specific experiences and things in addition to the curriculum you have to take um, that if you're interested in those experiences, it's well worth it. Um, but again, if it's preventing you from, you know, taking a class that you were really interested in taking and in order to get your, you know, AP or get your global citizenship diploma, you have to take this other class that you're not very interested in, I would say take the class where your interests lie. Um, like I said, the, the experience is great and if a student is interested in the experiences that are required and the classes that are required to get it, go for it. But again, it's not, um, it's not the be-all, end-all either. I just like to put in a little balance there. And that's something that, as a freshman, you don't so much need to worry about it. This is something that, Ms. Pagan, correct me if I'm wrong, w at the end of junior year that you would um, talk with your advisor, or would it be before that? Okay, so from sophomore to junior year is when um, a student could start having that conversation if that is an interest. But if they want to look at the requirements, we do have that information for them. Uh, SCORE. So the college office has been using SCORE. Uh, this is our second year. software, so it's really easy to log into from anywhere. Um, it's great for college exploration in terms of you can put in practically any college and it's going to come up with lots of statistics on location and cost and the area it's located in and what are the activities in that town. I mean, it, it is quite helpful. Um, and also those minimum requirements. That's sometimes a great way, um, like if a student is planning on, say they want to go to uh, some sort of reach school and they're a freshman. Well, it's easy now to pull up. What are the requirements right now in 2022? And what do I need to look at? You know, if this is the college that I want to go to. These are their minimum requirements right now. So it's just a good kind of down to earth way of looking at is this college going to be someplace that, you know, is a 50 50 shot or a reach school or something? Yes, I know I can definitely get in this college. But all that information is in there. It's very helpful. Um, the other tool that I am very excited about using with our students is Use Science, which is an aptitude uh, test. Uh, interest, like so we've used career interest profilers and that kind of thing, but while interest can change over time, which is completely normal, um, aptitudes don't necessarily, and so it's a series of five to seven minute short tests 
that students take, and we'll do this with them in, on a retreat day. Um, I happen to have the opportunity to do this with students um, last year, and they actually quite enjoyed it. It is really interesting figuring out what, you know, where, where are my strengths and what, you know, what kind of careers would fit in with the things that I can do and that I'm good at. So um, I thought it was a great tool, and I'm excited about using that. Um, talked a little bit about exploring co college options with SCORE. Um, and two, when you open up SCORE on your own, you can, there's nothing you can do to hurt it. Poke around, check things out, it's really interesting. Um, <coughs> as I mentioned before, um, we've had College Festival in the past. Um, on college campus visits, every fall is kind of like rep visiting time on high school campuses and we have a slew of college reps that will come to visit us each fall. Um, of course, this past year was a little different, and fortunately, uh, we were still able to do virtual visits, which was still a nice opportunity for students to actually get to talk to college reps, ask specific questions, learn more about colleges. Um, colleges typically want to talk to sophomores and above so this year our visits were more uh, geared towards juniors and seniors we don't want a freshman missing you know their math class to go talk to a college rep because two between freshman and senior year a lot of that information can change um, but this is something that your students are going to have to look forward to in future years being able to visit with college reps on campus um, also something else that we have done um, for many years is go on an official college tour and we've taken our entire sophomore class. Uh, we weren't able to do it this past year, but I hope this is something that we're able to do in some form uh, in the near future again as things evolve. Um, and it's not so much, to per we typically go to Rollins or Stetson. Um, we alternate between those two, but um, what we're trying to promote is the types of questions you should ask on a college visit. You know, what are you looking for? Um, you know, would a small college be a good fit for me? Because a lot of times you'll say, well, where do you want to go? Oh, I want to go to, you know, UF or FSU, and they kind of name the top whatever football teams <laughs> are going. But getting them to kind of open up and look at, you know, all different types, like a smaller school, just kind of gets the ball rolling there to see where they would um, have a good fit. consortium of private school counselors which is something um, our office is a part of um, we have a virtual college fair coming up in February um, registration details are to come so this is a great opportunity if your kids are you know starting to move that direction and it, it would be interesting to them this will be an opportunity that's coming up that we'll we'll email email out that information um, like I said most want to talk to 10th and up but it certainly doesn't hurt to get the wheels turning right now and you know, have those conversations over the dinner table of you know, what places that they're interested in and why. <laughs> um, money matters. Again, this is something looking long term. I mean, I'm sure it's on lots of parents' mind. Ooh, how are we gonna pay for college?
need to be the ones doing the research. Um, FastWeb is a popular one, as is MeritAid. Uh, Bright Futures, just a little bit about that, because the grades you're just, your student just received are going to be contributing to that Bright Futures GPA. Um, Bright Futures, a um, few things. They do super score with testing, which is really nice. Super scoring is taking your best math and your best um, language, reading, writing, putting that together, and you get your super score, which is really nice. So you could have one test you took at one date and one test you took at another, and they'll take the best of those um, tests. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is uh, 100 hours of community service, which nicely coincides with the Holy Trinity requirement um, for graduation. There is also a medallion level, which requires 75 hours. Um, some, most of our students don't have an issue making that GPA in terms of, e you know, at least getting into the medallion level. And the way they calculate GPA is they are going to take the classes that they want, your math, your science, your English, your social science, et cetera. And um, they recalculate the GPA, the state of Florida, that is. Um, the area that does become more difficult to reach are the testing areas. And um, that can change from year to year. Um, it actually changed, I think it's been two years ago, they raised the scores a little bit. Um, but they did actually bring the ACT one point down. It was a 26, I think, for that second level. So they did, and that was to even out the difficulty um, between the SAT and the ACT to make it more uh, even. Um, but that is something that, you know, we got actually get asked the question, I see quite a few students will stay in Florida for college. Um, that is one of the reasons, because it's really hard to pass up that money that you earned if you um, qualify for the scholarship to have that good chunk of tuition paid. So just something to think about. Um, Mrs. Ramos was going to be here to give a little chat about the college counseling area or excuse me, the um, counseling area. She is a certified school counselor. Um, but just some of the services and things that she offers, um, social emotional support to our students, um, stress management. She, I can't, her office is right next to mine and sometimes I'm just like, you're a miracle worker. The kids will go in there crying and they'll come out laughing. I mean, she's, she's wonderful. Um, family communication, she's great at bringing people together and sorting out um, issues, social dynamics, and um, of course for more um, serious or long-term counseling that a student might need, uh, she, has, um, she has some great contacts in our community of some amazing counselors and psychologists. And I think I spelled psychologist incorrectly. I am so sorry. A little typo there. Okay, uh, so. that hmm, I need to grab my lunch before I walk out, my, out the door. I need to hit submit on that assignment <laughs> before I close my computer at night. So all those things that help with personal responsibility. Um, make sure your child works hard, but also make time for themselves. And I, I love that one. Um, I love stressing a balance um, in our planning meetings. Um, our kids are under so much stress today, and they do work really hard. 
So it's great to encourage them to you know, go do things that make them happy, get outside, get away from the devices, and have a balance to their lives as well. Teachers are always available to help with anything, and I have to wholeheartedly agree with that statement. We have some amazing teachers here. Um, teachers that are really willing to go that extra mile, and I have been impressed time and time again, even working here and, and just seeing all the inner workings, they really do care. And um, students that reach out and ask for that help, um, and, and parents that may need, you know, a little extra information or whatever, you know, they, they are ready, willing, and able to help. Let your child figure out their own way to study and let them make their own mistakes. I don't think I need to elaborate on that one. <laughs> um, does anyone have any questions about anything that I've covered tonight? Or if it's something that's more specific, you know, please feel free to email me, call me. I'm always available. Anything? I really appreciate everyone coming out tonight. I got quite a few emails today saying, oh, I'm supposed to come, but I'm sick. My child's sick. We have this, we have that. So I know we have a lot of kids out ill right now. And um, I just appreciate everyone uh, coming out on a Tuesday night to learn more about what we offer here. Your kids are great. They're amazing. And um, I love being their advisor. Thank you.